In this video, we're going to make a maypole. No, not that one. Oh, not that one either. A maypole. For centuries, May Day has been celebrated as the beginning of spring. May 1st. And at the center of the festival, the maypole, a tall, thin pole decorated with garlands, flowers, ribbons, and or signs. In the Alpine region, each town erects their own special pole. Traditionally, dancers will take the ends of the ribbons and intricately weave them around the pole. If you've seen my Alpine Village display video, you may have noticed the maypole. It's an accessory piece that I really wanted, but I never could find a village version. After years of searching and hoping someone would eventually make it, I finally just made my own. It was actually my first DIY accessory piece and super easy to make. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic maypole so that you can display it in your village. For this project, most importantly, you'll need a pole. I prefer the Wilton brand, and that's something that you can find in a cake decorating aisle. They're really, really straight and easy to cut. You could also use any kind of wooden dowel, skewer, or natural stick. Some maypoles have garlands. We're gonna make one in this version. For the garlands, you can use pipe cleaners, as I call them. Even this miniature leaf garland would work. You'll just want to find something with metal that will help keep a round shape. You'll also need something to attach the garland to the pole. Thread or fine string in a neutral color works fine. I'm going to go a little bit dark here so that you can see it in the video, but I usually will use a beige or a white, something natural. You'll also need a pair of snippers to cut the wire and a knife to cut the wood. Optional tools include tweezers, clothespins, a needle, a small cylindrical shape like a bottle, also glue. Hot glue works great. And a quarter, I'll explain that later. And last but not least, optional decorations like ribbons, flowers, or signs. However you want to decorate your pole, any color, any choice, all up to you. So first off, we're going to work with a garland circle. You can totally guesstimate this, but once you have the shape that you like, the width that you like, you can cut it with some wire snippers, being careful not to snip off a lot of the greenery that's attached to the wire. I trim away a little bit of this greenery just so that I can see the wire and know what I'm working with here, but I'm going to reserve this greenery so that I can hide the wire later on. Bend the wire so that it interlocks. Bend one wire upwards and then you'll bend the other wire downwards so that it kind of looks like an S shape. Once I have interlocked the wires together and it feels like it's going to hold tight, I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue on top. This is just to reinforce it. And then I'm also, while the glue is still wet, put some greenery on top. Now we're going to bend the wire to get that circle shape. So what I do is I just push my fingers against the wire against a bottle or something that's kind of cylindrical and I just move it until the garland has a round shape. All right, so let's work on this pole. What you're going to want to do is cut a straight line directly across the top of the pole. I'm sorry, my camera angle wasn't that great here, but I'm just running the knife back and forth so that I have a straight groove from one end to the other. And then once I have a straight line, I'm gonna enlarge it just a little bit, tilt my knife to the left and to the right so that it's just a little bit wide. Your string will fit in this groove. So the string is pretty important. It's going to be what connects the garland to the pole. And this is where your needle will come in handy. You're going to want to attach your needle to your string like you're sewing something. You're going to want to divide your garland into two sections and be mindful that the connection will have a little bit more weight to it. So you might want to scoot down just a tad closer to the connecting side of your half. You're trying to get your thread as close to the wire as possible and you have all this greenery that's going to be in the way. The clothespin helps fold that greenery down so that you can get the thread as close to the wire as possible. You're going to insert your needle so that it's touching the wire. You're going to start from the top and go down towards the center of your garland and go back up. Do it one more time. So go down, under, and up. And then you're going to loop the end together, knot it, and then I always double knot it. That's what my grandma said. 
one knot's not good enough, so make it two. And trim off the end. So now we're going to figure out how high up the garland is on the pole. Again, there's no real mathematical equation for this. It is all what you want it to look like. What you'll do is you'll put your string up against the top. If you want your garland further down, you're going to give it more string. If you want it higher up, you're just going to lessen the string a little bit. So once you have the height that you want, you'll just mark the center with your finger and then bring your string down. And now we're going to do the same loop and knot pattern on the other side of the garland. And we're going to go from the top down and around and up, and then down, around and up, and double knot. At the end, cut off the remainder. Take your pole and put it in the center and gently place your string in the middle of the groove. And you can adjust to each side, trying to get the garland as level as possible. If you find that one side of the garland hangs down a little bit more from the other side, that's totally fine. It happens. Don't worry about that. You can bend your garland, but the best way to fix this is by the string or flower or signs that you can attach to the garland. Let these be a way to straighten out and level out your garland. All right, so now we're going to stand up the maypole. So how do you do that? Let me show you how I do this. So I've got a quarter here, and what I'm gonna do is just dab a little bit of hot glue on the quarter, and then I'm gonna just stick my maypole on top of it. And I'm not even concerned about the garland, I'm just concerned about making sure that the stick is as straight up as possible. You can always remove the hot glue, it comes off easily. So if you ever need your quarter, there you go. If you are adding a maypole to a winter scene, you'll just take some scrap snow base, cut a slit down to the center, tee it so that your pole can fit in the middle, and wrap around towards the back. And then you can put some snow fluff on top just to camouflage it a little bit more. If you are using your maypole in a spring scene and you can't really cover it with snow base and you don't have green base, my best solution is to take some tacky glue or Elmer's glue and put a thin layer of glue on top of the quarter and be sure to wrap the side. Once this glue dries you can just paint it. You'll just peel the glue off and you'll have your coin back. Now that we have our pole standing on its own, what you can do is take any kind of ribbons that you have, any colors that you like. To measure the ribbons, what I do is I have one that I'm going to start with and get a base measurement of. So I'm just going to take it, wrap it around the garland, bring it back down. I do want it to touch the ground. I'll just snip it off here and then I'll use this to measure out other ribbons. I usually do about eight ribbons. If your garland got a little wonky and is too heavy on one end and you really want it to be more level, you can add extra string and have four strings holding it up instead of the two, or you can add extra ribbon to the end that is too high up and that'll help bring it back down to level. You can also get your hot glue gun or some tacky glue and then insert them into the garland. And here is our finished maypole. No matter what village you have, you can customize the maypole to fit in. And even if your village isn't up around the 1st of May, the maypole is a great reminder of spring days gone by or spring days to come. As long as you customize it, it can really fit in any village. Happy May Day and thanks for watching.